The Indian Councils Act 1909 9 EDW, 7 C. 4, commonly known as the Morley-Minto Reforms or as the Minto-Morley Reforms, was an act of the Parliament of the United Kingdom that brought about a limited increase in the involvement of Indians in the governance of British India. <laughs> Minto-Morley Reforms in the early 20th century, two developments emerged in the Indian national movement. First, nationalists became increasingly vocal and adopted a stronger tone while demanding representation of Indians in government. In 1906, Lord Minto prepared a minute where he argued that the growth of education had led to the rise of classes in India that began to claim equality of citizenship and demanded a greater say in government. Second, the period saw the emergence of extremist nationalists who aimed to undermine the foundations of the British rule. The most violent form of this movement led the assassination of government officials, both Indian and British. John Morley, the Liberal Secretary of State for India, and the Conservative Viceroy of India, Gilbert Elliot Murray Kinnanmound, 4th Earl of Minto, believed that cracking down on the uprising in Bengal was necessary but not sufficient for restoring stability to the British Raj after Lord Curzon's partitioning of Bengal. They believed that a dramatic step was required to reassure loyal elements of the Indian upper classes and the growing westernised section of the population. They produced the Indian Councils Act of 1909 Morley Minto reforms. They did not go any significant distance toward meeting the Indian National Congress demand for the system of government obtaining in self-governing British colonies. The act was important for the following reasons. It effectively legitimized the election of Indians to the various legislative councils in India for the first time. Earlier, only a limited number of Indians were appointed to legislative councils. The majorities of the councils remained British government appointments. Moreover, the electorate was limited to specific classes of Indian nationals. The introduction of the electoral principle laid the groundwork for a parliamentary system even if this was contrary to the intent of Morley, as stated by Burke and Qureshi, to Lord Curzon's apprehension that the new councils could become parliamentary bodies in miniature. Morley vehemently replied that if it could be said that this chapter of reforms led directly or indirectly to the establishment of a parliamentary system in India, I for one would have nothing at all to do with it. Single quote dot. But he had already confessed in a letter to Minto in June 1906 that while it was inconceivable to adapt English political institutions to the nations who inhabit India, the spirit of English institutions is a different thing and it is a thing that we cannot escape, even if we wished because the British constituencies are the masters, and they will assuredly insist all parties alike on the spirit of their own political system being applied to India, he never got down to explaining how the spirit of the British system of government could be achieved without its body. In 1906 a Muslim delegation requested the establishment of separate electorates for Muslims. The reforms granted this request but the Hindus saw this as an exercise of the divide and rule policy. The nationalist charge that the British were using divide and rule policy through these reforms have been dismissed as untrue by Mark Nidus. The concessions were a constant source of strife from 1909 to 1947. British statesmen generally considered reserved seats as regrettable in that they encouraged communal extremism, as Muslim candidates could not appeal for Hindu votes and vice versa. As more power was shifted from the British to Indian politicians in 1919, 1935 and afterward, Muslims were ever more determined to hold on to or even expand the reserved seats and their weightage. However, Hindu politicians repeatedly tried to eliminate reserved seats, as they considered them to be both undemocratic and hindering the development of a shared Hindu-Muslim national feeling. In 1906, Morley announced in the British Parliament that his government wanted to introduce new reforms for India in which the locals were to be given more powers in legislative affairs. Thus, a series of correspondences started between him and Lord Minto, the Governor-General of India. A committee was appointed by the Government of India to propose a scheme of reforms. The committee submitted its report, and after the approval of Minto and Morley, the Act of 1909 was passed by the British Parliament, commonly known as the Morley-Minto Reforms. <laughs> Major provisions Topic 
The Act amended the Indian Councils Act 1861 and the Indian Councils Act 1892-1. The members of the legislative councils, both in the centre and in the provinces, were to be of four categories, ex officio members governor-general and the members of their executive councils, nominated official members those nominated by the governor-general and were government officials, nominated non-official members nominated by the governor-general but were not government officials and elected members elected by different categories of Indian people. 2. The maximum number of nominated and elected members of the Legislative Council at the centre was increased from 16 to 60, excluding ex officio members. Point three. The maximum number of nominated and elected members of the provincial legislative councils, under a governor or lieutenant governor, was also increased. It was fixed as 50 in Bengal, Bombay, Madras, United Provinces, and Eastern Bengal and Assam, and 30 in Punjab, Burma, and any lieutenant governor province created thereafter. Legislative councils were not created for provinces under a chief commissioner. Point four. The right of separate electorate was given to the Muslims. 5. Official members were to form the majority but in provinces, non-official members would be in majority. 6. The members of the legislative councils were permitted to discuss budgets, suggest amendments and even vote on them except items that were included as non-vote items. They were also entitled to ask supplementary questions during the legislative proceedings. 7. The Secretary of State for India was empowered to increase the number of the executive councils of Madras and Bombay from 2 to 4. 8. Two Indians were nominated to the Council of the Secretary of State for Indian Affairs. 9. The Governor General was empowered to nominate one Indian member to his executive council. Legislative councils Topic. The Governor-General, with the approval of the Secretary of State for India, made regulations for how members of legislative councils were nominated or elected nominated, and their qualifications. Regulations made in accordance with the Act could not be exercised until laid before both Houses of Parliament, and either House might object. By the regulation of November 1909, the councils were composed as follows. India, 68 total 69 with the Governor-General. Eight ex officio members six members of the Governor-General's Council and the Commander-in-Chief and Lieutenant Governor of the province in which the Council sits, 35 nominated members, and 25 elected members 12 from provincial councils and municipal committees, 6 from landholders in 7 provinces, 5 from the Muslims of 5 provinces, and 1 each from the Chambers of Commerce of Calcutta and Bombay. Madras, 48 total, 49 with the governor. Four ex officio members, three members of the cabinet, and the advocate general, 23 nominated members, of which not more than 16 were officials, and one representative of Indian commerce, two nominated experts, and 19 elected members, one elected by the Corporation of Madras, eight by municipalities and district boards, one by the University of Madras, four by landowners, one by the planting community, two by Muslims, one by the Madras Chamber of Commerce, and one by the Madras Trades Association. Bombay, 48 total, 49 with the governor. Four ex officio members there from the executive council, and the advocate general, 21 nominated members, of which not more than 14 were officials, two nominated experts, and 21 elected members one elected by the Corporation of Bombay, four by municipalities, one by the University of Bombay, three by landholders, four by Muslims, one by the Bombay Chamber of Commerce, one by the Karachi Chamber of Commerce, one by the Millowners Associations of Bombay and Ahmedabad, and one by the Indian commercial community. Bengal, 53 total, 54 with the lieutenant governor. Three ex officio members of the executive council, 22 nominated members, of which not more than 17 could be officials, two nominated experts, and 26 elected members one elected by the Corporation of Calcutta, six by municipalities, six by district boards, one by the University of Calcutta, five by landholders, four by Muslims, two by the Bengal Chamber of Commerce, and one by the Calcutta Trades Association. United Provinces, 48 total, 49 with the Lieutenant Governor, 26 nominated members, of which not more than 20 be officials, and one representing Indian commerce, two nominated experts, 20 elected members, four elected by the large municipalities in rotation, eight by district boards and smaller municipalities, one by Allahabad University, two by landowners, four by Muslims, and one by the Upper India Chamber of Commerce. 
Eastern Bengal and Assam, 42 total, 43 with the lieutenant governor. 22 nominated members, of which not more than 17 be officials, and one representing Indian commerce, two nominated experts, 18 elected members, three elected by municipalities, five by district and local boards, two by landowners, four by Muslims, two by the tea interest, one by the jute interest, and one by the commissioners of the port of Chittagong. Punjab, 26 total, 27 with the lieutenant governor. 19 nominated members, of which not more than 10 to be officials, 2 nominated experts, 5 elected members one elected by the Punjab Chamber of Commerce, 1 by the University of the Punjab, 3 by municipal and cantonment committees, it Burma, 17 total, 18 with the lieutenant governor. 6 nominated officials, 8 nominated non-officials 4 to represent the Burmese population, 2 to represent the Indian and Chinese communities, 2 to represent other interests, 2 nominated experts, and 1 member elected by the Burma Chamber of Commerce. <laughs> Legacy The Indian Councils Act served as the governance structure of India for a decade. It was modified Parliament relating to the governance of India into a single act of 135 sections and five schedules. The Montague Kelmsford Commission was formed in response to increasing demands in India for home rule, and issued a report in 1917. The Government of India Act 1919 enacted the legislative reforms recommended by the Montague Kelmsford Report. See also Topic. Government of India Act Disambiguation. Indian Councils Act 1861 Indian Councils Act 1892 Government of India Act 1919 Topic. References Topic. Topic. External links Topic. Bibliography Kadindia Original Text of the Indian Councils Act with Brief Summary